Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Savancy. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, it is finally the time for us to roast and toast the Memphis Grizzlies. But before we get into that, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as you all know, no team in the NBA talks as much trash as the Memphis Grizzlies. There's nobody. No one talks more trash than that group of dudes. Those Memphis Grizzlies boys, man. All they did was talk trash all season long. And it was one thing after the next thing after the next thing. Going into this series between the Memphis Grizzlies and the Los Angeles Lakers, we did our playoff predictions. I picked the Lakers to beat them in this series. I believe I picked them to beat them in six games. I'd have to go back and look at the show that we produced around that. But I believe I picked them in six games, right? But the Memphis Grizzlies, yes, they were shorthanded without Steven Adams and some other key players. But nevertheless, they were still very confident and still talking a whole bunch of junk. So what happens? <clears throat> series starts. Of course, John Morant had like a hand injury. Lakers took care of game one. Game two, John Moran is out, and we all know that the Memphis Grizzlies are a very dangerous team with or without John Moran, but especially without John Moran because they catch. I think they catch a lot of teams um, 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 lacking and sleeping on them because they think, well, their best player is not there, So, th and they're always a really good team. So they win game two, right? And all it took for the Memphis Grizzlies, all it took was for them to win one game. The minute they won that game, they started their chirping. If you think of Dylan Brooks, <clears throat> Dylan Brooks is turning out to be one of the most delusional players in the entire NBA. Dylan Brooks, before the series started, was like, I don't care who LeBron is. He old, man. He got to give me buckets. He got to show me. You got to give me four. This was Dylan Brooks. There was even a video, I think, of game three when LeBron walked up to Dylan Brooks. And he was like having a little chat with them. I'm sure LeBron was just like, you know, a friendly sports band to like, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. You've been talking all that trash. We're going to see what's up. Dylan Brooks for the entire playoffs. Let's look at Dylan Brooks numbers. <clears throat> In these playoffs, he averaged a whopping 10 points per game, shooting 31% from the field, 23.8% from the three-point line, 71%. From the free throw line, getting you three three rebounds, 1.8 assists, 1.2 turnovers, and 0.2 in steals. This dude was a non-factor. You couldn't even find these dudes after they started losing games. They were skipping press conferences. Next thing you heard, oh, Dylan Brooks was like, oh, it's not me, it's the media. No, bro, it was you. It was you. Now, going into yesterday's game, <clears throat> I actually didn't watch the full game because I already thought the Lakers were going to win that game, number one. Number two... The game looked like it was getting out of hand even before halftime, right? So going into that game, the Lakers looked like they came out with a lot of energy, and they did. Um, and you can tell from tip-off, they were playing uh, really well. And I woke up this morning expecting the Lakers to have beaten the Memphis Grizzlies. But what I thought was, okay, the Lakers have been up big on this team before. I thought the Memphis Grizzlies were going to kind of like make a run towards the end of the game and then make it kind of close or whatever it is. And that was an absolute opposite that happened i woke up and saw a box score of 125 to 85 beating that team by exactly by exactly 40 points ironically the same number that dylan brooks was asking for to me i think in all of this the memphis grizzlies look like a sideshow at this point and i said it in the past that this, all of this trash talking that a lot of people thought was cute. Oh, they're young. They're covered running up the chimney. Oh, we got it for you. Blah, blah, blah. I said, that's going to have an expiration date. I said, now it's cute because all oh, these guys are new and they're exciting. And oh my God, I, you know, this guy, they're sensational. Oh, they're just tough. And I mean, they're just confident and blah, 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 blah. I said, if they continue to do this and they don't start and they don't produce wins, especially in the playoffs. They're going to turn into the fan favorites to an absolute clown show. And that's exactly what the Memphis Grizzlies look like. Let's talk about another player, Anthony Davis. A person 
that I've been really, really critical of in the past. But I think it has to be said, Anthony Davis has been the Lakers' best player this series. I think in this series, in six games, he has, what, 26 blocks? Or some, or some, or, or, or some madness like that? Yesterday, Anthony Davis had five blocks again. Anthony Davis has been in deterrent to the Memphis Grizzlies. Those guys were not even looking at the basket. Anytime Anthony Davis was, I mean, he snatched one, he, he blocked the shot. He blocked John Moran's shot, I believe it was in the first or second quarter and snatched the ball. I mean, it was, Anthony Davis has, has been, I believe, the Lakers' best all-around player. If you look at his stats, these playoffs, um, Anthony Davis in six games is averaging, let me make sure I'm looking at his numbers, 20, 21, 20, uh, 21 points per game on 49% shooting from the field, 33% shooting from the three. 82%, 83% shooting from the free throw line, but he's getting you, uh, what, 10.7, no, 13.7, excuse me, rebounds with three offensive a game, getting you two assists, only 2.3 turnovers, 1.3 steals, and get this, 4.3 blocks a game. That's unheard of. That is unheard of. By far, I believe Anthony Davis is the Lakers, the best uh, two-way player on the Lakers because he affects the game on the offensive side and the defensive side. You look at LeBron, this series, he averaged 22 points per game on 48% shooting from the uh, from the field, 48.6% from the field, uh, 19% from the three. That's terrible. I think LeBron will have to cut back on his threes because he was attempting 6.8, making 1.3. That's too many threes. Uh, shooting 67%, 67.7% from the free throw line, getting you, um, what is it, 11 rebounds because he had that 20 rebound game. So he basically averaged a double-double in rebounds. That's fantastic. And obviously... Steven Adams not being there, I think being one of the best rebounders in the NBA, um, also played into the Lakers' hands because the Lakers have a lot of size on LeBron James is six foot eight, six foot nine. Uh he did have three turnovers per game, which is not which is not bad at all, but one point three steals and one point three uh blocks. If you look at John Morant, yeah, he had that forty five point game, uh, but he only played five games this series. But really they were they were no real match. Uh, for the Lakers and I think a lot of that had to do with as I said I said yeah the Memphis Grizzlies they're the younger team and all of that but I just feel like they weren't mature I felt like their maturity was going to come back and hurt them and that's exactly what happened that's what I said going into the series I felt like the Memphis Grizzlies will beat themselves beat themselves and they'll get into this thing of a tit for tat and the Lakers will kind of like lull them into that and kind of bait them into that and then just go about that that's exactly what I said going into the playoffs when I did my analysis on this on this on this on this uh first round matchup I said that the Lakers, I believe, are going to be the more emotionally mature team. And that's exactly what they were. That's exactly what they were. They went out there and they handled their business. And the Grizzlies tried to make it a tit for tat, me versus you all. They were not even interested in them. They looked at them as a very immature team, which they are. And they made quick work of them. But the Memphis Grizzlies, y'all talk a lot of trash. And I think is I think is coming to the point now where we need to start tuning out this team until they actually start winning games. They talk way too much trash for a team that does absolutely nothing in the playoffs or has done absolutely nothing of significance. Talking trash to the Golden State Warriors, he's the champions. You're talking trash to LeBron James. Who on that Memphis Grizzlies roster has a championship to their name? Who, name the person who. That matters. That matters. You're talking to one of the top five, some people top three players in the history of the sport. Why are you talking trash to LeBron? You look like a bozo. That's what they look like, a bunch of bozos. And now they got to look stupid at the end of the series after talking all that trash. I think Desmond Bain said, oh, I guarantee we're coming back to Memphis. They're always guaranteeing something. Always guaranteeing something. I think it was a great win. I think the Memphis Grizzlies got embarrassed. And I think now we need to stop taking this team, this team seriously until they start actually winning playoff series and making it to the finals. Because you can't talk your way into championships. And that's what the Memphis Grizzlies thought they could do. They would talk their way into winning. No, you actually got to walk that walk. The talk is cheap, as we saw. These are my thoughts.